Good afternoon. Here we are, we're at a 1087, excuse me, a 1078, and I'm doing a conversion of batteries. I'm going from four 12 volt batteries to two group 31 threaded post batteries. I just wanna show you the start of this. Let me first introduce you, it isn't always so, but generally the rear side battery is the 12 volt connection back here. That goes to positive, generally speaking. Over here on the left side is your 24 volt connections. You generally have two coming into the 24 volt connections, one coming into the 12 volt connections, and down on this lower battery are two grounds. Now this out here, when you go to the group 31 connections, you can either leave it or not. If you want authenticity, you would leave it because that is your, uh, what do they call that? Uh, United Nations connection for the battery charger. So anyway, that's picture one. I show you that to show you where the connections generally are. You would be wise to check. In fact, if that is your 12 volt connections and your 24 before you take them apart and mark them accordingly. So here we are again, batteries are cleaned out. And this is basically what it looks like. May not look like, that's my disclaimer, may not look like that on yours. I was wrong about a couple of those wires. First off, this over here is the NATO connection. And that is for the charging system. That being removed, you've got, what you've got left over is this goes to your forward ground. I believe this to be your 12 volt hot, but I'm going to check that. And then over here you have 24 volt hots, which go to your alternator. Actually, they go to your uh, diode box, your polarity box, and one goes to your starter. Now, I will check that and I'll, I will try to do a, a test to show you how to do this. Um, but I wanted to show you what this box looks like. Okay, now for your cubes, you've got these spaces right in here. And you've got these plastic pieces in here. Something to remember that you would be nice if this was easily removable, but it is not because you've got your air compressor tanks underneath it and they're all mounted to it. So you need to remember that when you're drilling. But these cut out easily enough with a wafer wheel. And uh, that's my next step as a matter of fact, to cut those out and then to clean this box up. So. Here's showing you what I've done so far, is I removed the, the, the plastic piece that goes right there. I use a wafer wheel, whatever you use is fine. You notice I have a glove on. Yes, that stuff is hot when it comes slinging off of there. All right, um, however you modify it, if you wanna use wood down in the bottom of that to make a flat box, if you wanna use whatever, battery box or whatever, I'd love to hear about the modifications you do. This is just a preliminary to show how to get started, to get your group 31s in there. All right. All righty. So now I've got my plastic pieces cut and I want to show you if I can in a close up how I did it. I just cut them flat, cut them at these points here, at these ridges, uh, using an old wafer wheel to sand them out of there and it doesn't come out in dust. Uh, once it starts melting, it cuts nicely. But of course, it ruins your wafer wheel. Now, what I'm going to be doing next is setting up side shifting stops as wide as the battery. I use a uh, sheet metal screw, basically, a wood screw. Whatever you want to use there, a plastic screw would probably be best. Drill a couple holes and... Uh, Set those out. Remember, you got tanks underneath. You don't have to go wildly mad. Some of it's thick, some of it's thin. Now, just to show you the Group 31 sliding in here. Of course, with one hand, it's kind of hidden. But yeah, that's basically what it looks like. You've got somewhat of a stop down there from a ridge you created. And uh, there you have it. Continuing. So to give you an idea of what I'm doing, I like to have my batteries centered. And uh, 
that's what I did exactly with this one. As I take that stop, center it up on there, approximately five and a quarter inches from inside back, I uh, fasten that piece in there. It's as wide as the battery is. Drill some tapping holes, and this is the type of screw I use. I do not use the self-tapping of it. I found out that if I try to run that in there, the plastic balls up around it, and it doesn't make a good, uh, good connection. So if I drill it out ahead of time, and then go ahead and run, you could run a wood screw, you can run whatever type of coarse threaded piece you want in there, plastic screw, but that's it. So I'll put my other three in there, and primarily, uh, that'll get us a good base. All right, now having the base down, that's what it looks like. Really does clean it up quite a bit. You could put a battery charger in there, though I haven't tried it. I usually mount them externally. Now, this is what I use to fasten down the top of them. It's a gull wing. I'll show you the measurements real quick, but there again, I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you how I do it, and however you do it is perfectly fine. This is the inside of it. So you've got a seven inch outside, seven inch inside, and these are where the batteries are. On the end, it has a one inch lip, and it has an approximate dip of, of three inches outside, that being on that side right here. So, same way. Okay, having said that, Creates hole in the middle, and that's primarily what it looks like. Now what I tie it down in the middle with is I take the plastic divider that was in there and put, use that back in there. You could use a piece of wood. You can make that fastener any way you want to. This is my disclaimer. Somebody's going to piss and moan about the way I did it. I'm just sharing the way I did it to give an idea because I've heard some of it before. People ask if you can do it. So I've done it several times. I usually do it for municipalities because it eases the burden of them understanding the battery situation. So having the batteries in and in the middle, I put that plastic piece. I put the plastic piece there because it gives a tray. If you want to put things into it while you're working in the area, you got it. Okay, how can I verify that I've got a 14 and a 28 volt that, that I've got my wiring correct? Now, I've got what I suspect back here to be 12 volt positive, and I suspect I got the wires on here for 28 positive. I can verify this quite easily by taking and just one battery running it to ground, the 14 volt side. I can go up here to the alternator, or I can go in the cab to the 12 volt side, and I can go to the 14 volt side of the alternator and touch it off and see that I have a light. Now I know that's the 12 volt side of it and I know I can do it with the 28 volt side of it too. Verify it, take the ground off, make sure yourself. Thank you. All right, so here we are, finished product. Now, what I did to finish that up, you saw me go to the base. I fastened that gold wing fastener in on top. And I went ahead and put that and said that I use that for a tray in the middle. The last thing that I had to do was to make a jumper from my negative side to the positive side on the 12 volt. And what I choose to do is I choose to go up underneath here. Hey, you can choose anything you want. But it does definitely give an overall more presentable, more manageable system that... I'll use the word civilians can use, they can understand. So there it is. I think the job took me all in all, probably about three or four hours. And uh, it depends on how much you wanna clean that area up in here. Now, another part that I had to replace on this was the auxiliary starter real solenoid. And uh, I'll tell you what, the one that uh, comes with this truck was quoted at uh, about $270 consistently. And that's, that's ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. It was recommended on Steel Soldiers for a Napa ST88, 
and apparently that has quit being made, but they did cross-reference me to an Cole Hersey number. This is free of charge in here. Cole Hersey number, the part number being what's on the box. Uh, it's made in Mexico, but that's a little bit closer to home. I paid 35 bucks for this, and it works wonderfully. Um, bolted in there very nicely. So, that's amazingly a really weak point on these trucks. Okay, anyway, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me through uh, Steel Soldiers, and I'll post this up there, and uh, I hope it helps somebody. If it doesn't, okay. Thank you. See you. Bye.